This is Ryan from Cards and Boards. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the cards that we'll be releasing in our new game, Training Grounds Frontlines. I'll also be showing you a little bit about how to play the game. The two-player pocket edition of this positional strategy card game will be coming to Kickstarter in the first half of 2014. In Training Grounds, players are commanders of a joint task force group compromised of units and equipment from the various branches of the U.S. military. Each player will start the game with a single engineer as well as a level 1 base and supply depot at their headquarters. Each base a player controls at the beginning of their turn allows them to draw a card from their own custom build deck. Each supply depot level a player controls at the beginning of their turn allows them to collect $1 to help them deploy new units and equipment from their hand to one of their bases. Engineers are used to build and upgrade bases and supply depots during play. Infantry are inexpensive to put into play and are good for protecting your higher level units. During combat, all units and structures of a lower level must be targeted by at least one unit before anything of a higher level has a chance to be dealt damage. Your opponents can issue false orders to your troops to get them to attack or retreat when you don't want them to. Having an officer, such as an infantry second lieutenant in the area, can keep your forces from taking actions that you don't want. Unmanned units like the Gladiator Mark II are inexpensive units that can cover a lot of ground, but the downside to them is that they can be susceptible to electronic interference. With a cost of $3, an engineer can upgrade a level 1 base to level 2. A level 2 base will allow the controlling player to draw a card like the level 1 does, but a level 2 base will allow more advanced units to be deployed to that area. Units can only be deployed to a base that has an equal or higher level. The sniper sergeant has a high chance to score a hit on any unit it targets. Snipers can also target enemies from one area away so that the target cannot counterattack. The M1A1 tank can take a lot of damage and can be very difficult to send to the casualty pile. There are also equipment cards in Training Grounds front lines that can be equipped to your forces to make them stronger. Equipping and unequipping does not take an action, but it must be done during the controlling player's turn. Unequipping can also occur during the defender's retreat phase during combat. Any personnel card, like a sniper, infantry, or engineer, can equip the flak vest. When equipped, the flak vest adds an additional hit point to the equipped unit. Using rifle scopes in combat give your forces a better chance to hit their targets. Training Grounds Frontlines also has a number of order cards that can be used at different times during play. Two examples of order cards are double time and artillery cards. Troops use action points during the game to accomplish tasks like moving or building structures. All forces in the game have a set amount of action points that they can use each turn. The double time card allows a player to give an additional action point to any amount of units in the same area. The artillery card allows a player to target any amount of units or structures in the same area for a chance to deal damage. If you'd like to learn more about this or the other games designed by Cards and Boards, please look for us on Twitter, Facebook, or at www.cardsandboards.com. Thanks for watching.